Hello everyone, my name is Danielle. This is just going to be a video on uh, my report on Raven's progressive matrices. This is an IQ test I researched on for my reporting last week in our subject called psych testing. I'm just here to post this as reference for those who also want to know more about this IQ test and also for my my personal um, yeah, reference. Okay, so what is uh, Raven's progressive matrices? I'll start by introducing first the author. Um, it is, it was published or it was created by John C. Raven in 1936. John C. Raven is an English psychologist known for his contributions to psychometrics. And he is also a student of Charles Spearman. The Raven's progressive matrices is often useful to describe a scale as a test of observation or clear thinking. By itself, you know, it is not a test of general intelligence and it is always a mistake to describe it as such. Okay, so for this test itself, for the, the this IQ test, does not measure general intelligence. So that's what it means. You later on, you'll see that it focuses on two abilities that it wants to measure. So each problem in the scale is really the mother or source of a system of thought, hence the name progressive matrices. The RPM tests are considered to be the single best psychometric measures of general intelligence outside of multi-domain IQ tests like the Wester skills. And all three versions of the RPM are widely used in clinical, educational, occupational, and scientific settings. The various versions of this test have been studied in over 45 countries, sampling totaling over 240,000 participants. This is actually one of the you know, best and like I mentioned, widely used IQ tests. It was published in the United Kingdom and the, sons, the three sons of John C. Raven established the Scotland-based test publisher J.C. Raven LTD in 1972. Then in, 19, and in 2000, uh, 2004, Harcourt Assessment Inc., which is a division of Harcourt Education, acquired the J.C. Raven LTD Harcourt and was later acquired, uh, yeah, this was later acquired by Pearson PLC. You'll also, you can also find this peer, the uh, website, the Pearson website, and you can find this test there if you want to uh, avail or you want to buy it for those um, who are psych testers. And so the uh, Raven's progressive matrices has uh, three versions. They have the standard, colored, and advanced. And the so-called these parallel forms of the standard and color uh, progressive matrices were published in 1998. Since this test was becoming too well known in the general popu population, this was their way of solving that problem. With the increasing experience testes over the last 60 years, uh, this explains the increases in scores of around 10 IQ points per generation. Here, uh, this is an overview or at least a glimpse of how much the kit is. So for those who are interested, you can buy it in, also in the website. So I'm not an endorser, but at least you have you know, a picture of what IQ test you want to buy. And then, yeah, this is uh, the amount converted to Philippine pesos. What are the uses of the Raven's progressive matrices? It, is, it was basically first used for research purposes to be able to look into the genetic and environmental origins of cognitive ability. It is used to measure two main components of general intelligence. So there are many you know, different intelligences, but for this particular test, it measures the adaptive ability, which is 
to think clearly and make sense of, compl uh, of complexity and the reproductive ability, which is, um, this is the ability to store and reproduce information. Then this is also used as a good predictor of success in an, in an educational context. Then it's also used to look at an individual's reasoning skills and for neuropsychological assessment. These are the, comp the uh, components of this test. As you can see the picture there, maybe you are familiar with this certain test and have encountered this maybe um, in your school or if you've gone through psych test, um, um, if you've um, gone through the clinics or you know places where you would take psych tests. Uh, so the Raven's progressive matrices is nonverbal, it's abstract, and it's uh, multiple choice. As you can see in the picture, there are no words, no numbers. All you have to do is make sense of the patterns. It's, so it's kind of like a puzzle. It consists of visual geometric design with a missing piece. Patterns are presented in the form of 4x4, 3x3, or 2x2 matrix. It can be done both in a group and individually. Can be untimed. So what's really good about this test is it can it can be you know done in a group individually and timed and untimed. So if you want to do it without a time limit, you can use it for the purpose to assess a person's maximum capacity for observation and clear thinking. But if you want to use it, to uh, I want to have a time limit. He can use it to assess a person's speed of accurate intellectual work. And then this test is also um, can um, done with the use of paper and pencil, but there is a computer-based version. Now let's look into the different versions of this test. The Ravens standard progressive matrices has six items. The, it has five sets where there are 12 items in each set. The test was published in 1938. It is composed of black patterns on a white background. And as you will be taking this test, the items are presented in increasing progressive difficulty. So you'll notice the first few questions or the first few um, the first few items will be very easy, and then the last ones would really be the hardest. The standard version is usually for those who are five, um, ages five and up, up to elderly. So it can, it is a um, really broad test that can be taken by, um, you know, uh, a variety of an age groups. So that's five years and above. There's also a revised one, which is the SPM Plus, which had more difficult items replacing the parallel ones. The second version of the RPM would be the Craven's um, Color Progressive Matrices. Um, these are for those with general lower ability and or mentally impaired. So for those who cannot understand or speak English, suffer from physical disabilities and intellectually subnormal or deteriorated. This is really good, especially for young children since this is why they made this colored so that it'll be visually stimulating. And this can also be used for anthropological studies and clinical work. So this version has 36 items where there's three sets. The first, set which is the a and the third one the b what comes from the standard version and they just added 12 more items in between which is the set a b the next or the um the third version of this iq test would be the ravens advanced progressive matrices as you can see in this picture as well why it's advanced because it it's more difficult and um, it is usually for the for adults and adolescents of above average intelligence. 
Uh, same as the standard, it has black patterns on a white background and it contains 48 items where you have two sets. The first set contains 12 items. The second set contains 36 items. This version was original, originally drafted in 1943 to be used for War Office Selection Board. Then it was revised for general use in 1947. 1962 edition had 12 problems removed of set two. So the remaining were arranged in ascending order. The score was revised at 0 to 36. So set one to 12 problems covers intellectual processes from SPM sets A, B, C, D, and E, which is a short practice test. Then the set two 36 problems. So assessment of analytical and integral operations of higher thought processes. Let's look at the validity of the test. So the validity, there are, I've, I've actually seen a lot of um, validity when it comes to proving this test valid. It has really shown good validity. And this journal, this is just an example journal with, um, the East Orange Veterans Administration Hospital. So you will see here that there is a concurrent validity scores on the Raven progressive matrices, which correlated about as well with the scores on the WAIS verbal. So the correlation of this is quite high, right? So this really indicates that there is good validity. I've also uh, searched or I've also seen the International Technical Manual and there were other forms of validity, but I just chose particularly the convergent validity. So the evidence of convergent validity is provided when scores on the assessment relate to scores on other assessments that claim to measure similar traits or contra constructs. Years of previous studies on the APM supports in convergent validity. So there was a sample in one of, of 149 college applicants. So the APM scores correlated 0.56 with math scores on the American College test. And then there's also a study using 104 university students. And then Frame and Determan reported that scores from the APM correlated 0.48 with scores on the scholastic assessment test. And then here it says also that evidence of convergent validity for the current version of the APM is supported by two findings. First, in the standardization sample of 929 individuals, scores on the current APM correlated 0.98 with scores on the previous APM, which is really high, like 0.98, that's really high. For the reliability, there were numerous works and scientific publications that report the reliability of this IQ test. This, um, this is from the SPM manual. The scale has a retest reliability varying with age from 0.83 to 0.93. It correlates 0.86 with the Terman Bene test and has been found to have a G saturation of 0.82. As you can see here, also from the same journal I showed you earlier, in the study of Burke and Bingham, um, they did the Unsimed Raven which showed a surprisingly split half corrected reliability coefficient 0.98, not 96. Yeah, so that's high as well. Then you also notice here the other one with the time without a time limit. Um, it says here that there is also um, and there's a really big um, high tier of um, correlation between the two sets of scores found to be 0.98. Okay, so it it really has so it, it yielded a reliability coefficient 0.96. I think this test is um, what what I really like about this test as well is it's um, it doesn't have any 
um, it's a bias. It's free from cultural bias since, you know, it doesn't have numbers, doesn't have words, doesn't have any, it's just abstract. And a lot of people or a lot of kids actually enjoy doing this, although some adults find it difficult as well because, you know, some of them would feel stressed <laughs> looking at the patterns. But surprisingly for kids, they find it like it's, it's, it's like they're, finding a missing puzzle. And then, so just to add that, going back to the reliability, I've also, I've also found this in the International Technical Manual where it showed an internal consistency reliability. Uh, there was a split half for the APM total raw score, which was 0.85 in the US. So it really does show a good reliability. Then for the norms, since this is a test that's been widely used, the, this test was actually first standardized by Raven on 1,407 children in Ipswich. I don't know how to, to pronounce that, England in 19, 1938. So there were a lot of normative studies that were carried out, but it was first done in England. There's also norms um, in the US and other countries as well, like Asian countries. And that's it. That's just, just a quick run through. I just wanted to record that. So at least, you know, it'd be a good reference for me and maybe for those who are, who wants to know more. And yeah, these are my references. <laughs>